car skins. There's car skins, guys. <laughs> oh, give me those car skins. They are so sexy. What's good, my fellow peasants? How you all doing? A sneaky ATAR came out. I don't know where this came from. I never saw this announced. Um, there's no English translation of it yet, but a sneaky ATR came out. I'm even a couple of days late with it. Uh, one of you guys pointed it out to me in a YouTube video. I uh, was thinking, what the fuck's this guy going on about? You asked me if I've reacted to the latest ATR. I thought you meant E3, um, but no, you meant this one. And this, oh god. <laughs> that is the only way I could describe this video. Um, Especially on the car skins, especially on the first car skin. Um, they've released new skins for the Regalia, uh, DLC I might add, as well as new weapons. Um, they're also DLC and also there's a bit at the end I'll go into it with. Uh, there's some costumes and there's a bit on Brotherhood. But let's go into the first car skin. Let's go into it. Look at it guys. That's fucking right, it's a Sydney skin! I'm still calling her Sydney, by the way. Um, I know it's supposed to be Cindy, but f I mean, fuck it. I'm, I'm, I mean, it even says on the back, look, Sydney Orem. Sydney Orem. So uh, I'm sticking with Sydney, um, but they, they haven't quite announced uh, how we're going to get these skins um, yet. They have for certain weapons on the Japanese side, but not with these skins. So I fucking hope I can get it straight away, because look at it, guys. Look at it! It's so fucking sexy! She is so hot, man. I, I did a top 10 sexiest um, video game females, Final Fantasy females, and I put Sydney at number 2. But, no, fuck it, I'll take it back. I'm actually putting her at number 1. Sydney is by far the fucking. I mean, she is the game slut bunny. I ain't gonna fucking. You no. Know, I, I hope she's got a good story, I, but. No, oh, fuck it, I don't care. I don't care. She is just so fucking hot! And now they've made a skin out of. I mean, they've got, it's official. It's official, guys. The, Rega the Regalia is now officially the most legendary, most awesome, most epic vehicle in vid video game history. Fucking period. End of story. It was already, I mean, it was already, look at that bonnet. <laughs> Fucking hell. It was already um, up there when we saw it transform into the Type F airship. It was fucking legendary then. You know, it looked slick. It looked pimp. It has such a lore behind it. Um, of King Regis, and that car plays an integral part of the story. But now that they've done this, holy shit, that was the one thing that was missing. It was the sex appeal, it was the sex factor, it was making it sex on wheels. I mean, there were four dudes, and they were driving, and uh, it was quite, you know, it, it was quite a cock fest in that car. Um, I mean, we have seen Vagina Touch Seat, uh, that girl who looks like Yuffie in that trailer. We don't know who she is yet, but we saw her in it, so we have seen Vagina touch the seat. Uh, I'm guessing she's Gladiolus' sister, by the way, making a call on that now. But now that they've made fucking Sydney skin, it's official. It now has the sex factor. It, I mean, the only way that car could be any sexier is if fucking Sydney was, I don't know, scissoring Tifa Lockhart on the bonnet with... Riku spread eagle on the roof rack. Uh, other than that, there's no other way that car could be any sexier. I am driving with that skin. Holy shit! Moving on to the next skin, cause I'll um I'll go back and I'll fap to uh, I'll fap to that Sydney skin later. <laughs> this next skin, this is nice. This is nice. It's the golden chocobo regalia skin. Um, what I like about this is it is actually golden. It is, I cannot tell you how often it pisses me off when things come out with a description of golden and it's yellow. But that is, look at it, it is golden. Oh, that is really nice. Oh, that is so nice. And I think it's going to go really nicely with how sort of integral they've made chocobos to the game. Sort of, they've become your buddies in this game. They even fight with you. You chill out you know, with them by the fireside. So I love this skin. I really do like this skin. Um, it's going to be so difficult on, of all these skins, which one I'm going to put on. Um, I, I hope we can buy them all. I mean, it's going to be the same with the weapons when they come up. Certain ones are free if you buy them from certain stores, certain websites. But I hope you can still buy all of these. Because I will, I'll buy them all. Because every single one of these skins is fucking dope. Um, but no, uh, with the uh, Regalia, what makes it even more legendary is there's actually a real Regalia. I don't know how many of you guys actually know this, but they actually, Audi R8, they actually created a one-off model of the 
regalia. And that, you know, I missed that off of points I made a minute ago. That bumps its legendary status right up, right up there, right up there. The game hasn't even come out, and I'm already fairly confident that uh, the regalia is going to be absolutely fucking legendary. I'm, I'm almost certain of it. Uh, moving on to the next one. This one, um, oh, what's the name of this one? Uh, uh, Platinum Leviathan Edition. Platinum Leviathan Edition. Uh, I was looking at that weapon on the side. I can't quite figure out what that is. I'm, I'm guessing it's one of the weapons that... It's not the Trident. I can't quite work out this skin yet. Uh, I'll probably need to look a bit. If, if any know, if any of you guys know, link it in the um, description. Is that one of Noctis' weapons? What is that? I, I don't quite understand this skin. This Platinum Leviathan skin. Uh, what's that on the bonnet? Is that Leviathan on the bonnet? I'm really struggling with this one, guys. I mean, it, it looks nice. It looks nice. But I'm just going to go out on a limb here and guess that, um, you know, being as it's Leviathan, Leviathan, I've already said, I think is going to be a very, very important character um, in this game. The reason being, because I think Gentiana is Leviathan. If you ain't seen that video, get your fucking asses over there and watch it. Uh, that's theory video number three. Still convinced of that. Um, but these skins, as far as changing them, I'm guessing we're going to have to go to Sydney to get these changed. She'll do the paint job. Oh, that'd be so epic. That's going to be so epic. Just, let's get, get, oh, this is the next skin. This is the next skin. Um, this is probably, if, if my penis didn't control 85% of my brain, this is the skin I'd actually wear. This is the skin I love the most. The fucking nostalgia guys the nostalgia i love this well done square for making 2d sprites i mean bloody bravo square bloody bravo the, you can even see um umbra i think it's umbra on the front um a little 2d sprite of umbra but this skin oh oh the feels the feels i mean they've even got them on the front you can see them there um, even got the little gleam on Nox's sword, they've even got on the swords as they used to look back in the day. This is so nice. This and the wind mirrors, the blue wind mirrors, so sleek, so nice. The DLC team have done really fucking well. Uh, I'm gonna come back and talk about uh, the DLC team um, in a minute. At the end, we'll go through this. Uh, these are weapons now. This is lightnings. Um, lightning sword, lightning sword, was it? Is Blaze Fire Edge? Let me just make sure I've got that right. Blaze Edge, is it? I mean, they've said Blaze Edge. I thought it was Blaze Fire Edge. Is it just Blaze Edge? No, I swear it's Blaze Fire Edge. I think it's Blaze Fire Edge anyway. Um, but yeah, this uh, this is available on Japanese Wise 11, and like I said, they've announced it for the West yet. This is on 7 Eleven and 7 Net, Net Shopping. Uh, you get it for free if you order from any of uh, either of those. Um, just like any, us who bought the old Miss collector's edition we're going to get massa moon uh, for free but like i said i really hope uh we can buy all of these that's the massa moon now my one gripe with this guys is when i bought um the ultimate collector's edition and it said massa moon was coming i, I of course thought sephiroth's massa moon and when i saw this i thought why the fuck is that katana not seven foot long why is that katana not seven foot long um oh look look the horns the way the horns break off Unevenly, that is so dope. I'm just gonna pause it here um, on Masamu. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's the original Masamu, it's not Sephiroth's Ma Masamu. And I'm kind of disappointed with that. Um, I think they should have stuck with Sephiroth's Masamu. Why not? The big fuck off seven foot long uh, katana. <laughs> Sephiroth's Masamu, why not? I mean, Noctis's great sword, that's basically uh, like Cloud's Buster sword, that's fucking ridiculous, but. There you go, whatever. Let's move on. Uh, I like this. I like. Um, we have got the Mage Masher. The Mage Masher from. Or Zidane's Mage, Ma Mage Masher from 9. Uh, this is the. Where'd you get this one from? This one comes from the Square Enix store. Square Enix e store, once again Japanese. I uh, can't, can't quite quote for what that's going to be in the West. Um, so I can't even cover this ATR fully, I can only cover what's been translated, there's not a full translation of it yet, that I'm aware of, I don't know, I've been searching for it. 
not been covered yet. I think this really was just an ATR for Japan. Um, I don't know if they're going to do a you know, similar version for the UK. Uh, sort of what stools will be available for them. But th I think these are the first dual swords we've seen. And this is dope. This is fucking dope. Um, I'm glad that they're, going, they're giving a bit of praise to the other games. Uh, like FF9. We have that. This is... Oh, what was this? This was the Gel, Gel, Gel Bulg, Gel Bulg, Gel Bulg. I don't know if I'm quite pronouncing that right. And the Gel Bulg is an Irish, an Irish lore. It was, it was in Final Fantasy XIV. It's a legendary Irish weapon called the Belly Spear. It was said to open into 30 points after entering the body of an opponent, and was used to great effect by some legendary Irish person. <laughs> I can't even pronounce the name. Um, some say that the weapon was made from bones of a sea monster which had been found dead on the shore after losing a battle with another of its kind. So yeah, a little bit of Irish lore in there. Looks pretty dope. Uh, where did that one come from? Amazon. Amazon Japan. Um, oh, now these, these is the suits, the outfits. Look at him! Look at Noctus, the cheeky, suave bastard. Uh, we did see these outfits back in Versus 13 when um, Idolus, Aldercep, and King Regis, um, sort of the peace treaty goes tits up. Uh, you saw a lot of guys in the background wearing this. This is a classic Lucius Kingdom suit uh, outfit. Um, this was very much back in Versus 13 when the Lucius household were sort of being more, their concept was they were more like a mafia type family. Um, which I kind of feel like it's moved away from that now. They're not as mafia as they were, but it's nice that throwing a bit of versus 13. Um, you now keeping some of some of it is it's not completely lost all identity from versus 13 or indeed 13. Um, it, you know, like I've said, I've been talking about this a lot over the last couple of days. 15 is no longer connected to 13, but they are still honouring. So the development process that it was once connected, that it was once versus 13. Um, personally, I like not just his other outfit, I'm going to be fighting his, in his other outfit. But you best believe when we come to towns and cities, or when I go to get my skin changed at um, Sydney's workshop, I'm putting that outfit on. I'm putting that outfit on, I'm going to go, and I'm going to fucking woo her. I'm coming, Sydney. I'm coming, baby. Me and you. We must make a pact. We must bring salvation back. Fuck Luna. Fuck. No, I take that back. I take that back. I don't mean that. Um, Luna, I've got a lot of riding on Luna as a character. Um, the way Tabitha spoke of her, sort of being the heroine of the world, very grand words. I think there's a lot riding on Luna. I think she's going to be a huge figure in the game. Um, because a lot of people have been complaining, we've seen a lot of Sydney and not much of Luna. Uh, we haven't seen much of Luna, and they've held a lot back on Luna, on her character, her personality. But I think that's a good thing. I even saw one person complain why the Regalia skin wasn't of Luna. Guys, I think some people need to get some context here. Sydney is our slut bunny, and Luna is our heroine. I mean, I might be in a bit harsh saying slut bunny. You know, I do hope Sydney's got a great personality. I think. I really hope she's integral to the plot. I hope she interacts with the cats. She's got the key. Yeah, moving on. Now, the Lucius Kingdom suit that is available on the Deluxe Edition and the Ultimate Collector's Edition. Um, Noctus only, so I'm going to be for Ignis, Gladiolus, or Prompto. Um, also, just going back, backtracking a little bit because I have now found a uh, bit of detail uh, on the car skins, what they're available. Um, on uh, the Satoya, Satoya, Satoya online shopping will get you the Golden Chocobo Edition, the Deluxe Edition or Ultimate Collector Edition will get the Platinum Leviathan Edition. Oh man, that's disappointing. That's because I'm getting the Ultimate Collector Edition. That's disappointing. Of those four car skins, the Platinum Leviathan Edition. I mean, it looks good, but it looks kind of similar to them. I really wanted the fucking um, Sydney skin, so I am disappointed by that. GEO. If you buy your game on GEO, you get the Cindy edition. As for the Pixel Character edition, the 2D sprites one, that is download version. But hopefully I don't have to be disappointed. Like I said, hopefully we can buy all of these. And these are just what you will get for free. 
with your order. Very business smart, Square. Very, very business smart. Um, can't fault them for going this. This is brilliant. Uh, I'm really glad that they've done these DLCs. Uh, and finally, finishing off, we have a little bit of news on Brotherhood. Brotherhood. The next episode of Brotherhood will be on July the 7th. So in five days, guys. In five days, we're going to be watching episode three. Um, again, tune in. Let's watch. We'll watch it. Have a good time. Uh, and this one will feature Gladiolus. Gladiolus, I'm gonna get what is this? Amish, Amishisha, Amishisha, A M I C I T I A Amishisha. Oh fuck, man, guys, <laughs> I'm so bad with pronunciation. You know that. So yeah, those are sick guys. Um, this is what this is what E3 should have had. Um, this kind of thing, you know. E3 was a bit of a mess, and we was all kind of saying, oh, we know we kind of understand that they don't have much to show off. They showed off a lot already. This, fucking this, this. Honestly, it was not hard, guys. The structure of E3, all it had to be was, you know, show the story um, bits. So the bits on Kingsglaive they showed us, the Afrojack trailers. No. Lay down the foundation of the game, the game trailers on day one and two, and then day three, you add Matt Kishimoto's game case, you, add, you showed us these skins, you showed us those weapons, there you go, you would have had a fucking stellar E3, but instead they did it all round back to front, they did day one, the fucking game case, and they did day two, you know, the actual good stuff, and then they had fucking disconnect, anyway, I'm not going over E3, but all I'm saying is if they'd have brought this ATR back to E3, I think it would have gone down a lot smoother because this is very nice. And the last comment I want to leave off on is addressing the comments that are coming out to this video. A lot of positive, the majority of positive, but some of the negative ones, and they are getting likes, I'm just going to come out and address those, that there are people who are complaining at this video saying that Square should not be working on DLC content like this. So they should not be putting ski no, awesome skins in and weapons in. Uh, instead of doing that, Square, you should be working on the frame rate. You should be working on the story. You should be working on you know, this part of the game rather than DLC. And all I want to say to those people is shut the fuck up and fuck you. It does not take a genius to realise that them you know, having a small number of people 10 20 people working on the DLC part does not suck a huge amount of resource from the game I mean I remember back in the day there were these comments um, in 2014 I remember it there was or it might have been early 2015 on Facebook they put up about 12 to 15 pictures of Lestalum um, sort of in-game screenshots just to show us some of the game and I remember it even then People saying, oh, instead of showing us, uh, no, picture square, why don't you work on the fucking game? Stop wasting time putting pictures on Facebook and work on the game. Are you fucking retarded? That is my question to anyone who has ever made the complaint that they should put pictures on Facebook or they shouldn't be do doing DLC content like this. Are you fucking retarded? Genuine fucking question. To even entertain the notion that the North American... Facebook, social media Facebook team, putting pictures on Facebook is somehow sucking resource that could be put towards the game and making the game better or getting the game released earlier. To even entertain that notion is absolutely fucking ridiculous. There is only so much resource you can throw at a game and just because Square Enix might have 300 people and 10 of them or 15 of them work on DLC content, it's not the case that if they took those 10 or 15 people and had them working on no, the, the core part of the game instead, that that would be any better. It doesn't work like that. Sorry to burst your bubble, any fucking idiot who's making that comment. It doesn't work like that. You can't just have infinite number, number of people working on a game. It's not the more the merrier. It really is not the more the merrier. I mean, if that was the case, if it was more the merrier, I mean, you could just pull in fucking thousands of animation grad students. I'm, I'm sure there's fucking millions of them in Japan. Millions of them in Japan. And you could just pull them all in and you could just get the game, divide it up into 3,000 no, different sections. You, know, you could get 3,000 fucking teams and all 3,000 teams can just work on a little portion of the game, 1%, and then they can all just 
know, throw the bit they've worked in into one game. They can all slap it in and you'll have this mess of a fucking game that you had 3,000 different fucking divisions working on and it'll be an absolute mess of a fucking game. It doesn't work like that, guys. It ain't a sweatshop, guys. Yeah, yeah, this ain't making t-shirts in Taiwan. This isn't you know, sewing footballs in China together. You can't just have... You know, Rows and rows and rows of steel desks and thousands of drone-like workers just all fucking there, just tapping away little fucking character models and sections of the games and you know, doing their fucking animation for their little section like drones. It doesn't work like that. It ain't a sweatshop. It ain't a sweatshop. So, kindly, whoever's making that comment, uh, those kind of comments, um, kindly shut the fuck up. Because uh, this DLC stuff is awesome. I'm willing to throw good money. Good, good money at that, especially for that Sydney skin. I'm gonna be fucking heartbroken if I can't get that. Um, I'm gonna be heartbroken if I can't get that. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know what skins you like. Let me know what weapons you like. Let me know just how much money. I want some figures. I want some numbers. Everyone type in the comment section just how much money you're willing to throw out to get that Sydney skin. I want to see some figures. I I'd go as high as maybe 25 quid. I actually think I might. And on that note, I'm off to start the Fappening 2.0. Until the next video. Coopo. P.S. There's a Final Fantasy VII Monopoly game coming out in 2017. I am all about that.